Let's check out the sweep node. What this is designed to do is to take curves and turn that into geometry. And what I mean by curves is polylines, nerves curves, Bezier curves, any kind of two dimensional curve that you draw out ought to work with the sweep node. So it converts that into polygons. Now there are two inputs to this. The first one's the backbone curve. The second one is the cross section. This cross section is optional, but we'll get to that later. The main idea is that we start with some curves that look something like this, and then this node will sweep some kind of shape around that curve. If we zoom in closer to these curves, we can see that right now this is set to round tube, but we can also do a square tube, so that will make it into squares, or we can also do a ribbon, which is a two-dimensional plane, almost like a grid in the shape of that curve. Also, we have the second input cross section. So what we can do with that is feed some kind of shape. Let's say this star shape right here. This also needs to be a curve, by the way. If this is polygons, it's not going to work properly. But if you give it another curve right here, then it will take the shape of that particular profile. One thing to keep in mind is that if you decide to use that second input right there, you need to be sure that A, this curve is at the origin, and B, that it's facing in the Z direction, like this. Something to watch out for is if you try to use a polygon shape like this for the cross section, it's going to mess up and you may not see it at first. Uh, so as an example, let's say that we just take a simple line and we sweep along with these polygons. Everything looks to be all right at first until we look at the top and we see that we have all kinds of weird things happening right here. Right now I have some end caps set, but we can get rid of that right here. And it looks like every single bit of our topology is considered to be some kind of curve as part of the profile. So in other words, it doesn't just automatically understand that we need to take the outline of this. It's going to take all the topology and treat that as if it was a curve. So thankfully the lab's tool set has a very easy way to extract the borders. It's called extract borders. <laughs> And uh, you could simply do that, maybe smoothen this a bit. The resample node is going to evenly space out these points. And if you'd like to smoothen this out even further, we can always convert this into a NURBS curve. So I like doing that. You'll notice that now everything is perfectly smooth. And now, as you can see, we have a much better result. If you accidentally do that with all those curves, this sweep is going to slow down a whole bunch. So make sure that you extract those borders because it'll take up your cook times by 10, 20, 30 times. And uh, well, that's not gonna be good. <laughs> do also keep in mind that if we convert this to NURBS, this will create a NURBS surface. So you may need to convert that after the fact. But just keep track of your geometry types here. If we convert this back to polygons, we're good to go. Or we can just not use NURBS over here and we have polygons right here. So what else can we do with this thing? Well, we have the end caps. We can do a single polygon. For some reason that doesn't actually work right there. We can do a grid, which if we turn on our topology, will give you this rounded shape so we can increase the cap divisions. We can change how much this scales outwards. We can also change how pointy it is right there. The nice thing is that this also gives us a group. So these end caps right here, if we need to identify those caps later on. And we can also do a single sided polygon, which again, doesn't seem to work. Maybe it's facing the wrong way. It's not. So in this situation, I'd probably recommend the grid just to play it safe. One thing you might be wondering is how do I change the number of divisions along here? 
there doesn't seem to be an option for that because as I change this, sure, we can change the scale, but how do we change the divisions along here? We need to actually go to the resample where our original curve was, turn on the points, and change the length over here on the original curve. So now if I set this to a value of 0 0.01, you'll see that we now have a more coarse result, a more coarse topology along the curve. So do keep that in mind. You won't find that on the sweep node, but it's expected that you're going to go up here to the resample and change the number of divisions there. If you find that your normals are flipped, then just go over here to the reverse cross sections and that'll take care of it. So normals are good, but if they aren't, then that flips them. We also have this option to, to stretch around the turns. That's generally something I'll keep on. It just gives you a better result. It preserves the volume as the curves go for, you know, harsh angles along here. See how that lost volume. So that's a good thing to keep on, I would say. And we also have this max stretch, which allows you to fine tune how far that's able to stretch out. We have another section down here that will allow you to scale the tube or whatever the cross section is as it goes through the curve. Keep in mind that curves are defined by having a start and an end point. So this will scale it along the start to the end. But if I do this, and let's say that I set a ramp, something like that, you can see this happen, especially on these rounder spots right here. Let's say that I go just thick to thin. This will really demonstrate what's happening here. This is the beginning of the curve, and then over time, it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. If you want to create a really psychedelic effect, you can change this roll right here when we have something plugged into the second input. Or if you want to go for a square profile, it works with square as well. So just as an example, here is square, and we can roll that square around like this. Pretty cool. What's also nice is that we can twist. And if we do twists like that, we get this rope looking effect right here. So we can do that. We can also do a partial twist, which isn't a full 360 degrees. So this will give you, you know, more fine tuned results. This says partial twist per, and then we have some additional options here. So we can say per edge, per unit distance, we can specify exactly how we want to twist this thing with the partial twist. But in most situations, what you're probably looking for is just a full twist. And so if that's not gonna give you what you need, then you can have finer control with this partial twist section down here. Also, this twist per section right here applies to full twists as well. So even if that's zero, I could say per edge, or I could say by an attribute, and that will specify exactly how much it should twist along the curve. So there's a lot of control there if you need it. We do have yaw and pitch. I don't really know exactly what you might use this for, to be honest with you. I guess if you're trying to be more specific about how you'd like to twist this, then you can do so right here. But again, usually this rotation will give you what you need. It's also good to keep in mind that you don't have to export quads or polygons. You could just export the columns, which are the lines or the curves that go this way, or you can do the rows, which are the cross sections along here. One technique you'll see a lot of people do is set the surface type here to columns. Then we twist them. So let's say that we just twist our columns like this. We then set another sweep node and we can use this as the backbone curve to twist around. If you are trying to make rope, don't use that technique because the polygons get really, really heavy. You're much better off defining a cross section on the second input 
and then just going here to make your polygons directly. So just keep that in mind as you're going through and that'll save you a lot of uh, poly counts in the process. For right now, we're not going to go over the custom construction options right here. If everything I just talked about isn't enough to get you what you need, then you can go to this construction tab and let's say change the cross section order. So we can uh, cycle through cross section primitives per vertex or per curve. We do have a lot of miscellaneous options here. So maybe you want to change the cross section profile as it goes throughout the curve. You can get very fancy custom stuff right here. But again, for right now, assume that this is more advanced than your typical usage for the sweep node. And last but not least, this will give us UVs. So if we compute the UVs, we can then go to our UV view, and we see that we have one huge rope being applied like so. Thankfully, we have a UV visualize SOP right here. And if we plug that in, go back to our perspective, then we can see what this looks like. And sure enough, our UVs are being applied appropriately. So that's really awesome. By default, you shouldn't have to mess with that too much, but in case you do want to mess with that, we can go to various options here with the scale. We can check out the seams. We have various attributes that we can export from this node. Pretty much any control you would want after this node is there. And that about does it for the main parameters on the sweep sub. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one professional consultations, as well as mentorships that are all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals more quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.